Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mike. I am the American Analyst, and tonight we're going to be looking at a New York Times article entitled, My Daughter Passes for White. She belongs in a way I never could. I'm comforted and worried. We're going to see what exactly this article is trying to say, because <laughs> I'm not entirely sure. If you like what I do, please be sure to subscribe to my channel, follow me on Twitter and Minds, and like this video. Let's get into it. Okay, so first of all, before we get started, a little bit of updates, news updates on the coronavirus. It seems that now six people in the United States have uh, passed on to the other side. But uh, the main news is the Pope himself, <laughs> his high holiness himself has caught the coronavirus. And it reminds me a lot of when the Pope in, uh, in, in, in medieval Europe caught the bubonic plague. And I actually think he was healed, I believe. I think that they like, they were paying attention to him so much that they actually healed him. It probably had most it probably had more to do with better hygiene, access to better hygiene. but I digress. The Pope has coronavirus. We're all gonna die. <laughs> no, no, it, it's not gonna be that bad, folks. Just make sure that you're uh, prepared. And I think it's going to be fine. I just, I thought that was really funny that the Pope has it. Obviously, if it, if it, you know, goes worse for him, I hope, you know, I don't wish ill on anybody, but I, I saw that and I was like, oh no, the end of days is coming. <laughs> um, all right. So that brings me to this article for, t for tonight. My daughter passes for white. And I, I wanted to read this article for several reasons, mostly because I think it's just sad. I think this is a really sad article that that this woman thinks like this. So she, here's the sum of it. The sum of it is she is a Pakistani woman and her she married a white guy. And their daughter takes more after their father than after her. That's about the sum of the entire article. But the, the fact that she's considering this actually, actually makes me legitimately sad. Um, for both her and for her child. Because this is, not, this is not the way to raise a child. And now, no, I don't have kids. <laughs> but this is not how you do it. This, this is not how you do it. We had moved past this. The entire point of Martin Luther King's I Have a Dream speech was that we judge people on the content of their character rather than the color of their skin. And and this is so antithetical to that. I want to read you a couple of, pa of a couple of passages from it. The first being this one. She describes the story of when she's a kid. And she's on the bus and she gets dropped off at the bus station by her great aunt. So that would be her grandfather's sister. And she's dressed in, her great aunt is dressed in traditional Pakistani garb. And when she gets on the bus, she s scoffs as in, and I quote, she scoffs and loudly tells her classmates that crazy lady is just my maid. Now, I, I can't imagine actually saying that about a relative. I really can't. And before you, you go off and think that the woman writing this is a terrible person, she does, in the, her, her next sentence is, I am still ashamed of how I treated my great aunt. But it still shows the, the mindset that she has about this whole issue. So she, she clearly knows that this is not the correct way to, to be thinking, but it is, it is affecting her anyway. And, you know, I, I can't, 
I'm not going to begin to tell you why certain people think the way they do. I, I can't. It's impossible. It is literally impossible. But this is why this made me so sad, because her main point in the article, as she goes on to say, is that she's concerned that one day her daughter will, will say that about her. So she, uh, makes the, she makes the point that um, during school she would throw out her uh, lunches because they were traditional Pakistani lunches. So she would throw them out. So she's worried that eventually her daughter is going to grow up and, and do those things. And to that I would say it seems to be your responsibility as a parent to prevent that. It seems like you should should raise your daughter in such a way that you say, hey, look, this this kind of stuff isn't that important. The The color of your skin is not that important. But she seems to be placing an over an over-exaggerated amount of importance on it. In fact, here's, here's the part that really draw, drew me to this particular article. So, um, at the dinner table, <clears throat> my father once coached us, when people ask you where you're from, what do you say? I guessed. Pakistani-American? Wrong. You are an American, period. Lose the hyphen. Totally agree. That is a wise man right there. That is a wise man. The The point of our country is that we, we are not built around a particular ethnic group. Our nation is built on a shared history and, more importantly, a shared ideology. Now, I do hate ideologies, <laughs> but I, I, think, I think the one exception... Um, could be the ideology of freedom, of liberty. And I think that as long as you believe that, you're an American in my book. That's all it takes for me. As long as you believe that, hey, look, you know, you have the right to do what you want to do, and I have the right to do what I want to do. Obviously, within reason. <laughs> but, and, and that's where the law comes in. That's where within reason is, is. But before I go off on a tangent, that's all it takes. It doesn't matter. None of this matters. This whole article doesn't matter to me. It it does, obviously, or I wouldn't be doing a video on it. <laughs> what I mean is that you should not be concerned with what your daughter is going to be, whether or not she's going to be pass, whether or not she's going to pass as white or not. So why am I talking about this? I think that one of the biggest issues that we are having as a country right now is this re-emergence, for some reason, this re-emergence of, I guess you could call it, ethnic identitarianism. It's like, it's the whole like, I, I am black, therefore, I am a woman, therefore, X, Y, and Z. And it has I don't know why I don't know why it's been creeping back up I really don't because I thought we had won I thought we beat this into the ground that hey look we're not gonna we're not gonna treat people differently based on the color of their skin anymore we're just not gonna do it but now you have a woman here who is doing that for her with her daughter and and, and I just this makes it really, really difficult for me to contain my emotions on this particular one. Anyway, um, I'm going to leave it there for tonight. Let me know what you think down in the comments section. To close, I would just say this. That, again, America, all you have to do to be an American is believe in freedom. I, I... That's all I care about. You believe in freedom, you're an American in my book. If you like what I do, please be sure to subscribe to my channel, like this video, and follow me on Twitter and Minds. Have a good evening. Thank you all for listening. This is Mike, the American Analyst. Follow me on Twitter, Minds, and subscribe to me on YouTube, and be sure to hit that bell notification. I'll be coming out with new videos every single day for your viewing enjoyment. Have a good one.